welcome into another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is Wednesday, October 9th around here, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to get into the Week 7 picks that I have, and we'll start with LSU Ole, uh, Ole Miss. going to be an incredible game down there in Baton Rouge, one that is incredibly hard to get a beat on. And then we'll get to the Red River Showdown between Texas and OU. Going to be a really fun game. One of those games that, frankly, you can really throw out the record book. Sometimes those people a little bit exaggerate how much that's the case, but in this one, you very much can. It's pretty much just whoever wants it more. Then we'll get into a little bit of an SEC roundup. We'll get to Alabama and Tennessee. They're kind of about trying to bounce back after really tough losses, and I think they got a couple of games that could cause them a little bit of trouble, and I'll get into that in the third segment. Then we'll just get into the top 10 teams. What do they have to do this upcoming weekend? Who are they playing in? What is the one thing that we really want to see from them this upcoming weekend? Then we'll get some questions coming into week seven, all the different things to break down, especially just how good this slate is, and if it is it the best slate that we've seen in quite some time but before we jump in oh excuse me I apologize for that get a little sneak peek for the show but uh before we jump in I do want to remind you all we get tons of uh, questions and comments throughout the show and the best way for you all to get your question on the screen we can have fun back and forth here is to use the super chat feature at the bottom of the chat on the sports network page you can add any question comment you'd like and then it'll pop up on the screen we can have fun back and forth here definitely want this to be interactive so utilize that as you please also gsmcpodcast.net is still up and running and that does the exact same thing so either of those that you'd like to use you're more than welcome but Let's jump into this because this one is a nightmare. This is a very, very tough game to get, to get a beat on because, frankly, I don't know if any of y'all have a very good beat on who these teams are, but I very much do not. I think they're kind of all over the place. They've played some really good games. They've played some not-so-good games. And LSU is a little bit easier to wrap your head around, but at the end of the day, I still think they have a number of places they can go over the next little bit, and it'll be really interesting to watch this one unfold. There's no two ways about that. That over-under is very high, and it probably should be. These are two elite offenses, and Ole Miss does have to find themselves just a little bit on that side of the ball, but I tend to believe they will against this LSU defense. All of this stuff is absolutely incredible in the SEC this upcoming weekend and really the next two weekends, but this is a really interesting game because both these teams have taken a loss at this point in the season. Obviously, LSU has a little bit more breathing room with their loss being out of conference, but the reality is I don't think there's a world where either of these teams compete for the SEC, get into the playoff without winning this game. So I think this game, weirdly, has become a must-win when, if they both walked in undefeated, probably wouldn't be for these teams. Obviously, it would still be a huge game, but that's the reality of the sport right now. I think neither of these teams is going to be able to make it the rest of the way with at least one more loss, and you can't go the rest of the way with two on the schedule. So you got to make sure that you win this one, and whoever does is in a very good place to possibly make a run of the CFP going forward. And I think the big-time question here is, what is Ole Miss on offense, and who can make the bigger plays on defense, right? You have to see, you know, what Ole Miss is really going to do. It sounds like Trey Harris' status is really up in the air, so definitely something to watch there. But the reality is figuring out what this team is, figuring out how they respond, because that's the funniest thing about this is they were able to respond against South Carolina, and they deserve a ton of respect for doing that, obviously. But the reality is... This is the week where you're really going to get tested. This is the week where you're really going to have to respond more than anything else. And sometimes you'll see a team get that big time win after a tough loss and then take their foot just a little bit off the gas pedal. I tend to believe that's not going to be the case with Ole Miss, especially with the opponent they're playing, but that is a reality. So we're going to have to figure out what this team's really made of. And then for LSU, I think it's really about situational football, playing really good on third downs, offensive and defensively, red zone, and then just making enough plays at the end of the day. And then your O-line's got to work. You know, uh, Will Campbell, John Emery uh, Jr., all of these guys are really coming into their own. Emery Jones, I keep confusing them. I apologize. Emery Jones Jr., very talented player. Both those guys have to be absolutely huge in this game. There's no two ways about that, and I believe Prince Oman Mielin is going to play in this game, so definitely something to watch there. If, uh, If LSU can control the line of scrimmage, especially with their offensive line, could be a long day for that Ole Miss defense, but Some players to watch, I think one of the bigger ones here is Juice Wells is going to be huge for this game. He is a guy that, obviously, with Trey Harris' status kind of being up in the air, he's going to be the number one wide receiver on the field, likely for Ole Miss this upcoming weekend. And last week, he had a couple of drops. He had a lot of people in his face after pretty much every single play. So maybe this takes the energy down just a little bit. Obviously, a tougher environment to play in. But at the end of the day, not playing against your former teammates definitely is going to make him feel a little bit better about this one. He has to be huge in this game. No two ways about that. Regardless of if Trey Harris is on the field or not, 
that is not going to be 100% of Trey Harris. You have to get a lot from all these other guys, and Juice Wells is one of the few that can really make those big plays that Ole Miss is going to need. And then you got Sunshine Perkins. This is one of my favorite players in the entirety of the SEC because his athleticism is off the charts. He's absolutely incredible to watch out there. And frankly, when you play an LSU team that is going to utilize running backs in the pass game, that's going to play a lot of things over the middle of the field with tight ends and things of that nature. And also, you're going to have to get to this quarterback if you want to actually uh, disrupt this offense by any means. And this is the guy that can do all three of those things. He's absolutely huge for this team. and He's been kind of coming on the last couple of weeks. He's going to be a huge player in this game, and frankly, I think he's got to have his fingerprints all over it the same way like Qua Rousseau did against Georgia for them to really get this win and for them to feel really good about their defense in this game. Caden Durham has been incredible for LSU and definitely a guy that coming in at the running back position as a freshman has really answered every single question you could possibly want for this kid. He has done everything the past couple of weeks, really has come on strong, and you're going to have to stop it if you're Ole Miss because the reality is LSU is not an elite rushing uh, uh, rushing team. If they can run the ball on you, you are not stopping this offense. I feel very confident saying that. So this is a guy that has to be huge for this LSU team, and if you can get a couple of big runs in this game, it might be tough for uh, Ole Miss to really stop them. And then we got Deshaun Womack. This is one of the best edge rushers that LSU has, and frankly, LSU has a lot of really good edge rushers. Braden Swinson's another one that's absolutely incredible, but this is a kid that can totally change this game in a second. You know, you have Prince Leo Man Mielin on the other side that can do the exact same, but you're going to have to get to Jackson Dart a time or two during this game the same way that South Carolina wasn't able to uh, last week. So you're going to have to get home, and I think they have a lot of guys to throw at them, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but... How Ole Miss can win this game? The biggest thing to me is just get interior push, and it's for a number of different reasons, but obviously they're going to be tough to stop regardless. You're going to have to stop the run. That's just the reality. Now you should be able to do that. If anything from the past couple of weeks shows us anything about LSU, that's probably the place you can stop this offense the most. But the reality is even beyond the rush game, even beyond you know stopping the run, because obviously that's a huge part of this game, Moving Garrett Nussmeyer off the spot is probably the most important part of this game for uh, for Ole Miss. When you talk about guys that can just rip the ball all over the field, Garrett Nussmeyer is probably in, at least in the top five. Frankly, I think if you give him a, a, a elite amount of time, it's pretty much him and Quinn Ewers in terms of pure throwers of the football. You got to move him off the spot. You got to get him out of the pocket, and then maybe you can get a couple mistakes. And then you got find your one-on-one matchups outside. This back end is not very great. You know they're relying on a very a, a huge amount of young kids to make a lot of big time plays jk johnson ashton stamps major burns all need to be huge players for them and although you don't have trey harris still find the matchups that you like still find juice well jordan watkins caden prescorn and take advantage of these kids because that's really the only way you're going to be able to win this one you're going to have to be able to push the ball downfield and you have a lot of receivers that can absolutely win one-on-ones you just got to find them when they do and then we'll get into uh, lsu's running backs because it's something we've talked about a little bit uh, earlier on in this, but LSU's offense is impossible to stop in a million different ways. They are going to be so tough to really get a beat on and make sure that you can absolutely push forward and feel, <coughs> excuse me, and feel really confident about what you're going to do. The reality is if they're able to run the ball on top of what they can do in the pass game, you have no shot. That's just the reality. And Pete Golding can do as many beautiful things scheme-wise as he, as he wants they're going to be able to make the plays that they need to. There's no two ways about that. So you got to be able to stop the run, keep Caden Durham out of this game. And if you can do that, then you probably have a pretty good shot. The only way to stop this LSU offense really is to make them one-dimensional, and this would obviously go a long way to doing that. And then we got to get into LSU, and the biggest one is what we talked about a little bit ago. Give Garrett Nussmeyer time. This kid is as dangerous as can be if he can stand in there and make the throw that he needs to make. Under While kept clean, seven, uh, 73.8, 14 touchdowns, 3 interceptions. Pressure has not happened a lot with how good that offensive line is, so that's obviously another thing here. Only given up two sacks all year, and both were to South Carolina. So Ole Miss is going to have to get home a couple of times, and LSU, if you can give Garrett Nussmeyer time, there is not a lot of defenses in the country that are going to be able to stop him. So keep him upright, make sure he can dissect the field, and then tear them to pieces, really. And then for LSU, you got to attack with a pass rush. Your back end is not necessarily good enough to keep up with these Ole Miss receivers day in or down in, down out, if you're not going to be able to get to the quarterback quickly. If uh, Jackson Dart is able to extend plays, have three seconds to pass the ball, Ole Miss is going to make a lot of big-time plays in this game. That's just the reality. So LSU has to get home. They have a ton of guys. Deshaun Womack we talked about. Braden Swinson's an absolute beast. Savion Jones, Gio, uh, Gio Paez, uh, Gabriel Rilliford. 
absolutely for real. And it's going to be incredible to watch all of these guys rotate in. And you really got to keep them fresh to keep this thing going. And am I a believer in Ole Miss, Andre? You know, it's a very interesting thing. I don't know yet. I think we'll find out this weekend how much of a believer I am. Because frankly, right about now, I have a very little idea of what that team is going forward. How much they can really do this year. And I think we'll learn a lot on Saturday. No two ways about that. But The other thing for LSU is set this tone early. This is a uh, non-Ole Miss team that if you let them out of sight, they will bury you. They will put up crazy amounts of points against this not-so-great defense, and it will be a really tough day for you. Now, if you can get on the front foot, if you can use those 15-play scripts, get a touchdown, go up 7-0, maybe go up 14-0 if you can get a big-time defensive play, you are going to be barreling downhill. And this uh, LSU offense is nearly impossible to stop if you can get Garrett Nussmeyer into a rhythm. So set the tone early, get a quick lead, get this crowd involved, and then things get really interesting on the other side of it. So this is an incredible game. If anyone has a very confident pick in this game, I will call you a liar because the reality is this one's going to be off the charts crazy. It's going to be all over the place. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at where this game is going to be played and I'm going to go LSU. I don't know. I, I think Ole Miss is probably the better football team. I'll be totally honest with you guys. But you factor in all of the different variables going into this one. The home field advantage. Ole Miss not necessarily being where I thought they would be at this point in the season. And kind of having a really suspect of, uh, offensive line. It's going to make me a little bit nervous about this one. I just think LSU makes enough plays. I think it's going to be a really weird up and down game. And I think it's going to come down to the wire as you can see. So it's going to be incredible to watch this one. I do think LSU is going to get it done. I think it's going to be a really crazy game. May um, even be the game of the Saturday. But at the end of the day, I think LSU gets it done. I think that home field advantage plays a huge part in this game. And Ole Miss just makes that one too many mistakes towards the end of this one. uh, And LSU gets that win. So going to be incredible to watch that one. Frankly, I can see it going any which way you could possibly imagine. Whether it's Ole Miss blowing them out, LSU blowing them out, either one of them winning a very close game. It's going to be incredible to watch that one unfold, but let's take our first break here, and when we come back, we're going to break down the Texas OU game. This one's special. No two ways about that, and I'll give you my pick and breakdown right after this.